I'm going to let the audience in on a little bit of uh, movie magic here. So we actually had to tape this show out of order today because we kept waiting for the vote on whether or not the motion to vacate uh, the speakership was going to go through. We were like, oh, my gosh, what's going to happen? We kept waiting. We kept waiting. We kept delaying it. Well, now we we're coming back and flipping this to tell you that um, Kevin McCarthy has been ousted. As speaker, the speakership is now vacant. Um, Matt Gates's uh, motion to vacate the speakership has actually gone through, and it was a vote of 216 to 210. Let me give you the eight Republicans who voted against Speaker McCarthy. This is Matt Gates, of course. Uh, Good, Buck, Mace, Rosendale, Burchett, Biggs. And Crane. Again, this is literally, I'm reading this from Charlie Kirk's Twitter. This is that yeah. literally is happening in real time as yeah. we're taping this. So we don't have all of the information yet. Um, but this is wild. I want to play Matt Gates earlier today trying to persuade his colleagues, which I guess he did a pretty good job of, uh, trying to vote to vacate uh, the, the speakership watch. Mr. Speaker, my friend from Oklahoma says that my colleagues and I who don't support Kevin McCarthy would plunge the House and the country into chaos. Chaos is Speaker McCarthy. Chaos is somebody who we cannot trust with their word. The one thing that the White House, House Democrats, and many of us on the conservative side of the Republican caucus would argue is that the thing we have in common Kevin McCarthy said something to all of us at one point or another that he didn't really mean and never intended to live up to. I don't think voting against Kevin McCarthy is chaos. I think 33 trillion in debt is chaos. So it's been fascinating to watch people, all I would say conservatives, who I truly believe are conservative, um, someone like Chip Roy, who has, I think has done a great job, um, has held Democrats' feet to the fire, has also held Republicans' feet to the fire, um, has done a lot to try and reduce spending. And he voted against the motion to vacate. Now, um, I know that his position was, look, he's not done the best job, but he's what we have right now, and we shouldn't you know, remove him in the, as if this is a football game. We shouldn't remove the quarterback in the, or the coach in the fourth quarter. And I get that. And I, I respect that position from people who I think have um, enough credibility to make that claim. But I also think if there's no accountability for the speaker who promised to you know, do things like v drastically reduce spending, cut spending, and then later on comes to this BS agreement with the Democrats, someone who seems to put Ukrainian interests above our own American interests. I saw one of his comms people tweeting out today like, Matt Gates is disrupting all of this and Kevin McCarthy wants to get back to protecting the border. I'm like, what the hell has Kevin McCarthy Zero. done in two and a half years to protect the border? Zero. He hasn't done jack shit until now all of it. Sorry, he hasn't done anything until now all of a sudden the optics are against him and he's like, oh, I need to get back to protecting the border. What the hell have you done? Not Nothing. Zero. Nothing. You're sending, you're voting to send all of our money to Ukraine. You're pushing the rest of the House members to sign on to these BS spending bills and you didn't follow through with what you said you were going to do. So if there's not accountability now, then when? You know, this is going to send, sh there's shockwaves. We just texted a House member yeah. real time. There's shockwaves going through that House and good. Be because it's wake up time. You've lied to all, most of them have lied to their constituents. I'm going to go do this. When I get there, I'm going to do this. And then they do not. And they should now know you better. This is time in this country where when you tell someone your yes better be your yes and you know, you know, at your own peril. If that if that's the case, you've got to go do what you said you're going to go do. And so this is going to send shockwaves. I'd like to see a Chip Roy in that seat because Chip will 100% yes. focus on the border. Yeah, he will. He will absolutely. A Jim Jordan would be great. Mm -hmm. He's of sound mind, but a, but Chip is a bulldog, and and he will, at the minimum, stop the bleeding at the border and what we're doing there, or at least push to help it stop. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, we'll talk next week about who's it going to be. Yeah, I mean, I wish I wish I could have I wish they could have verbally communicated that plan before yeah, voting be to house. Nice. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I, I would have preferred a plan of attack. Yeah. Um, I obviously think that 
giving consequences for a do-nothing rhino Republican is a good thing, but I also kind of want to know what the next plan is. Yeah, because we could get somebody worse. Right. Which I don't want to see. Right. Um, so Chip Roy, Jim Jordan, uh, Donalds, there, there are some alternatives that would be really good. Just a really strong... I can't remember the last time there was a really strong conservative as Speaker of the House. We've had to settle every time. Mm -hmm. Or it's been somebody terrible like Nancy Pelosi. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we deserve somebody really strong. Yeah, we don't need more vanilla. We, none no of that. No vanilla. We need somebody to come in there and yep. start swinging a hammer. And I'm somebody right. who's going to assert the powers that belong yes. with the Congress. Mm -hmm. Like the power of the purse string. Yes. Shut off the spigot for Ukraine. Yes. That's thing one. Uh, fund the protection of our own border. Mm -hmm. That's really important. We've got to do that. Yeah. And there, if you just put some McCarthyite in there, uh, we're going to get the same garbage that we've had. Yeah, I feel like, so let's talk about um, deal breakers. So for me, a deal breaker would be if you wear a Ukraine flag pocket square. Yes. Or a deal breaker. Ukraine flag I mean, pin. Yes. It's a deal breaker for yeah. me. Which Kevin yes. McCarthy frequently did. Yep. I just saw Lindsey Graham on some, I don't know, oh, mainstream geez, media Lindsay. morning show the other day. And he oh. was wearing, it wasn't just a Ukrainian pin. It was a Ukrainian, it was like the joining of yes. an American flag yeah, and the Ukrainian, Ukrainian flag He together. is so into it. He should go there and get on the front oh, lines. Oh, yeah. So into yeah. it. Well, he then really go should. fight that freaking should run war. Run for office in right? Ukraine. The only flag we could ever join like that is the Israeli flag. There's no other flag our nation should ever join with like that. And it's a complete, it's, it's diabolical. I know President Trump was not in favor of this happening today. Because look, it does disrupt some things. Mm -hmm. But, but I, I think this is, you know, getting someone now, been reserving, reserving my thought here, saying hopefully yeah. we had someone strong, right? Yeah. Yeah. That could actually lead the House into a Trump nominee and actually go do something. You know, because when Trump does take the White House... We better have a house that's power. Yeah. Well, yes. you got to keep the house. Because yes. again, if not now, then when? Kevin right. McCarthy just came to the table with the Democrats to, again, pass some BS temporary stopgap, kick the can further down the road, not actually stand strong, hold to your guns and say, I'm not budging. You guys have to come to the table. We're the ones in power. Mm -hmm. We're the ones who hold all of the chips. So if you guys don't come to the table, then I guess the government's shutting down and that's on you. And so often we have these squishy, grimy, rhino Republicans yep. who are like, but the Democrats are going to say that the government shutdown is our fault and we don't want that. And then they just cave. So then what, what is the point mm -hmm. in being in power if you are not going to wield that power to get your agendas passed? Yeah. There's why, there's that's no why point. 19 held out when he was nominated in the first place, right? It's why so many said, hey, this guy doesn't have the moxie. But remember, the, if President Trump becomes the next president, right, the first day he walks into the White House, he better have a house that will swing for the fences because mm -hmm. he's going to be under so much attack. You don't need a McCarthy yeah. in that moment that will play nice, yeah. negotiate with Biden, and stab Trump in the back. Mm -hmm. Well, look yeah. what happened last time. Uh, they they promised over and over and over they were going to do something about Obamacare. Right, right. First chance they did, th they had, they didn't. Nothing. They did nothing. Nothing, nothing. They voted, I think it was 54 times before they had the power to actually end Obamacare. In, in these ceremonial, uh, pretend little uh, non-binding votes. Right. Then when it was real, when it was the actual, it, they didn't do anything. Yeah. And uh, we just can't have that happen again. No. We no. can't. Um, all right, well, we'll keep you posted on the latest as it comes out. If you like that clip, there is plenty more where that came from. Click the link in the description below to subscribe to the News and Why It Matters YouTube channel to watch the full episode.